أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير حديث كتاب الله وخير هادي هادي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمر محتداتها وكل محتدات بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار قال الله عز وجل في الكتاب يا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا ادخلوا في السلم كافة ولا تتبي قطوات الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين السلام عليكم Brothers and sisters, and welcome uh, to the start of a new workshop, uh, which we have titled The World of Jinn. And we begin, as usual, with all matters of benefit and matters of uh, uh, beneficial knowledge by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Allah and we send salams and salah on this Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah to guide us and give us benefit in this workshop. And we, we seek refuge in Allah from shaitan, the accursed, and the, and the avowed enemy of mankind. <coughs> so we ask Allah to benefit this uh, gathering um, and gather us together in his uh, gardens of paradise as he has gathered us today, Amin. And we ask Allah, we have, uh, and this is not possible without Allah's help, benefit and blessing. Type. So uh, my name is Abu Basim. I think most of you know me. Uh, and this is going to be the start of a workshop. So when you say workshop, it's going to be a series of lectures. Um, I hope my audio is clear, inshallah. Barakallah fikum. Type. If it's not clear, just post, post a message in the chat box. So um, this is uh, going to be a series of lectures. So it's not something we're going to finish today, obviously. Uh, this will continue. How long? Allahu alam. Uh, I am estimating between eight to ten sessions, inshallah, hopefully. Uh, so today is session number one, right? And uh, we are going to start discussing by Biznillah, by the grace and tawfiq of Allah, the world of the jinn. Barakallah fikum. And Jazakumullah uh, khairan, all of you for joining. I know it's difficult, uh, weekends and especially over Juba, but alhamdulillah, uh, we have to take time out uh, to seek and discuss knowledge of this great deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so uh, we thank you for, for coming in, coming in and, and joining the session. And uh, we, we hope that Allah benefits all of us from this session. And you can also take forward the knowledge, implement it and, and discuss this and make dawah to it with your friends, relatives, co-workers, and so on. Um, before we start, we need to mention the hukum of uh, sending salah on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and today is Yom Al Juma, or the more, all the more so, yani, uh, because in this uh, series it's only going to be call Allah wa call Rasulullah. So Allah subhanahu wa taala says, and His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said so. So call Allah wa call Rasulullah. So we're going to mention the name of Muhammad ibn Abdullah or Rasulullah or Nabiullah or something similar, right through the whole uh, the workshop. Right. So what is the hukum? What is the ruling in Islam when you hear the name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The ruling is that in, in one halakha, in any particular session, like this session we have for approximately an hour or so. Yeah. For this session, the first time you hear his name, it is wajib. It is, it is mandatory. It is obligatory for you to send salah on him. You can say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma Salli Ala Muhammad, yeah, Alayhi Salam, whatever it works for you. But it is mandatory, obligatory, the first time you hear his name, to send Salah and Salams on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And every other uh, occasion when you hear his name in this lecture of mine, it's highly mustahab, highly recommended. This is the ruling. Obviously, it's better to do it. Yeah, but it's, and it's highly recommended because we know the hadith of Rasulullah that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, if you send one, Upon him, Allah will reply back with you on you in your account with 10 salams on you. So it's a fantastic investment. Hardly takes any time. Hardly takes any effort. Barakla fikum. Taib. So, um, 
So this is something we need to uh, mention. It's important. And on the Yom Al-Jumma, Rasulullah said, increase in sending Salah on me. So today's Yom Al-Jumma, so it's all the more so important that we try and do that. Inshallah, barakla fikum. Taib. So some ground rules before we get into it, and this is applicable for all the lectures which we will have on this particular topic, inshallah. First of all, try to listen attentively. Sometimes it's, it's a bit difficult, I know, on in a virtual uh, setting with Zoom or any other similar platform. Yeah, I myself, being an ustad, I myself prefer uh, physical, uh, you know, physical sessions. You know, but uh, subhanallah. Allah understand. There are advantages and disadvantages uh, through this, obviously, and with this, we're reaching out to a larger, inshallah, group. Uh, but make your best effort to listen attentively, as attentively as possible. Excuse me. Um, do take down notes. I'll try to send you some notes, uh, maybe not tomorrow, but next week, inshallah, before the next class, next weekend. I'll try to do that, inshallah, which will be useful for you. Uh, but otherwise, as well, you can use a scratch pad. You can make down notes as I speak, because all this is, inshallah, beneficial information. Rasulullah used to make a dua. Allahumma in a'udhu bika minal ilmi la yanfa. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from knowledge which is not beneficial. So always as, 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 as Muslims, we should try to seek knowledge which is beneficial, which will benefit, benefit us in dunya as well as the akhirah. Um, write down your questions which you may have, and I'm sure you'll have some questions, inshallah. Uh, do not interrupt me during the class. Barakla uh, fikum. This is very important because this disturbs wholly my thought process, and I tend to forget uh, what I want to say, and then eventually you will be the loser because I cannot, I will not be able to impart that information to you. So uh, hold on to your questions. I know these are important and uh, you want to get the answers, but just hold on to them till the question and answer session towards the end of the lecture. Um, if it's something you can't, uh, if I made a mistake or something in the, in the lecture or uh, some issue with audio and some stuff like that, you can post something on the chat when we'll try to address that, inshallah. But otherwise, generally questions on the topic, please hold, note them down because otherwise you may forget your questions. And for the brothers, raise your hand uh, in the chat, in, in your um, participants box so I can give you a chance to ask the question. And for the sisters, please type them out in your uh, chat utility. The sisters should not uh, use the microphones. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, generally mute your microphones throughout the session and I will open them up towards the end for the Q&A for the brothers specifically. And even if, even if the brothers wish to use, sorry, to use the chat utility, uh, please uh, feel free to do so. And of course, switch off your cameras. Your camera should be always switched off. Barakla So uh, the plan, inshallah, what I have done, uh, based on my schedule and, and the topic of Allah, is to try to have two sessions every weekend. Uh, we're starting today, uh, Yom al-Jumah. Um, this is the, the Arabian Standard Time or the Saudi time, 3.30 p.m. So you need to calculate what works for you in your own part of the world, uh, including daylight saving times and all these kind of stuff, yeah? Because I, I do not know really. I, it's easier for you to calculate that than for me to do it uh, on a global scale. Barakla fikum. And Yom al the next day, <clears throat> uh, Saturday, as you call it, um, the same time, inshallah, 3.30. Barakla fikum. So this is what we want to do. Uh, at times, I may do only one session in, on, on the weekend. Uh, bear with me because I could have some other commitments. <clears throat> but otherwise, inshallah, the plan is to have, inshallah, two sessions. And for all your benefit uh, and any new students who have joined uh, my classes, uh, all my recordings, the video recordings of them, because I have done earlier workshops on different topics, uh, marriage and family life in Islam, the Muharramat, uh, Ramadan, um, what else? Also topics on, on fiqh, Sira and so on, yeah? So you'll find all of these on this channel, on Vimeo. Uh, I do not use YouTube, so it's on vimeo.com slash channels slash uh, Islam for us. Barakla um, You will find, uh, even this recording, inshallah, I will post it out on, on the same link. <coughs> I use Telegram, which is an application similar to uh, WhatsApp. Uh, you can download it on for either um, Android or 
iOS. It's applicable. It's up available. Um, I have a channel called at Islam for us. You can search for it and join. It's it's a public channel. I used to post uh, beneficial information, inshallah, on on the Dean. Uh, I also um, manage a Q and A group for question and answers. You can join this as well. It's a public group. It's again at Islam for us. It's number four us hyphen QA. So I can search for it in the Telegram app, just in the search box, you will find it and you can join it inshallah. And you can post any questions um, on general topics of Islam and even on this topic inshallah if you wish. And uh, inshallah the others will also benefit who are part of the group. I also have a lectures group called at Islam for us lectures again on Telegram. And this is where I post all my lectures specifically. So the links and the video recordings will be posted here as well. And if you can also, this is also a public group and you feel free to join this. I also maintain a blog, though these, these days it's not very frequently that I update it because of you know Telegram and other commitments, but alhamdulillah, there's still some very good beneficial information on that link. It's ibnishafiq.wordpress.com. Baraklafikum. So this is something um, uh, I want you all to use, benefit from, uh, because all the information here, inshallah, is sahih, inshallah, and um, it's from the Quran and the Sunnah. Baraklafikum. So you can take a screenshot of this if you wish, or let me know towards then and I'll, I'll show up the screen again, inshallah. Time. This uh, halakha, or this series uh, and, and workshop is all about seeking knowledge. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in a hadith, which is Abu Dawud, Ahmad, Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, and a very famous hadith, most of you know this, meaning of which is that whosoever follows a path to seek knowledge, Allah will show him the way to paradise. In another riwayat, Allah will make the path of paradise easy for him. Not only that, the angels lower their wings, being pleased with the one who seeks knowledge. Whosoever in the, is in the heavens and on the earth, even the fish in the sea, ask for forgiveness for the scholar and in turn for the student seeking knowledge. Allahu Akbar. Yani khalas, what more do you want? You're in the right place at the right time. See, this is not something by chance. Again, brothers, there's no, there's nothing like chance in Islam. Everything is the qadr of Allah, as we will see in Shailah. Please mute your microphones. So there's nothing by chance in Islam. These uh, students I have today, 20 plus, whatever, uh, my invite went out to a lot of other, uh, a lot of people uh, or different groups. Again, I don't use WhatsApp, so that's, Maybe Allahu Alam, a disadvantage. Anyway, uh, Alhamdulillah. So I don't, it's not about numbers, but the point is that uh, let's say 100 people received the message, but approximately 20 plus have made an intention to join and listen to me. This is not a fluke or not something by chance. This is the qadr of Allah. Allah has chosen you to be in this session today. Wallahi, Allah has chosen you specifically to be in this session today to seek the knowledge of his great deen, of the only true deen, Islam. So it's something very great. And once Allah has done this for you, the least we can do is to practice this knowledge and take it forward, thereby making the path of Jannah easy for us. Also in another hadith, Rasulullah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is in Bukhari, narrated by Muawiyah radiallahu an, I heard the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, if Allah wants to do good to a person, he makes him comprehend the deen, Allahu Akbar. So the fact that you're sitting here understanding these things which I'm saying, inshallah, and other lectures which you listen to, and you understand the deen, this, mean, this means Allah wants something good for you. Allah wants Jannah for you, Allahu Akbar. And there are many more ahadith, ayat about this topic uh, of seeking knowledge, etiquettes and so on. I also have a lecture on that on the same Vimeo channel. But the point is, that this is something uh, not to, to be taken, not to be taken lightly. It's something very serious. The, the, the deen of Islam is a serious matter. And, and, and we as students of knowledge, we need to give it its due, uh, due, to, due worth by, by understanding the knowledge, by practicing it, and making dawah to it. Baraklafikum. Okay, so as we know, the topic is the world of the jinn. So why bother? Why talk about the jinn? And uh, please raise your hands if you have an answer for this. I want someone to answer, maybe two or three brothers, inshallah. 
why why did i decide to talk about the jinn and why are you attending this session to discuss about the jinn anybody raise your hand please uh, brother imran sheikh go ahead please yes assalam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh wa alaikum assalam yeah uh, ustad like uh, you know uh, in uh, quran in um, many of the uh, verses like uh, you know allah has mentioned about jinn like he always mention the humans and the jinns most of the places okay uh, you know so uh, this is something we need, you know we don't have much knowledge about it so okay it is actually you know uh, we should understand it what exactly it is tab jazakallah khair this barakla fik so the brother says it's it's mentioned in the quran so just because it's there in the quran it it becomes a duty for us to understand more about it uh, since we don't have that much knowledge about it brother uh, sami go ahead please assalam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh well uh, uh jinn is also one of allah's creations just like human beings and animals and birds so obviously we need to know more about the uh, allah's creation and also uh, i mean uh, uh, it is it is something which like uh, which is which is uh, 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 not clear and uh, many people have confusing knowledge about it so uh, yeah that's barak barakallah fi so the brother says it's one of allah's creations is it or is it not we'll see inshallah if the brother is right and because of that and because also the fact the brother says many people are not uh, very clear about this and they're, they're a bit confused they don't really know what it is so it makes it all the more important to seek knowledge the last um, contributor brother wasim go ahead please this is one of the pillars of iman uh, as we know because the belief in jinn like the belief in angels and messenger is also one of the part uh, that should be believed jazakallah khair barakallah fiikum so all of you are right so brother also says alhamdulillah this is a part of our iman uh, so it makes it important to understand and, and and talk about them there's one point all of you missed maybe some others knew knew about it but i didn't give them a chance is that they also impact mankind so it so even from that perspective uh, it becomes important to study about them and we will see how that happens inshallah type um and i started talking about if you if you remember uh, the, the ayat from surah baqara when we started the the session uh, surah baqara ayat number 208 ya ayyuhal ladina amanu dkhulu fi silm kaffa wa la tattabi'u khutuwati ash-shaytan innahu lakum aduwwun mubin all those who have believed allah says meaning of which is those who have believed enter into islam completely kaffa completely wa la tattabi'u khutuwati ash-shaytan and do not follow the footsteps of shaytan Allah did not say do not follow shaitan he said do not follow the footsteps of shaitan innahu lakum aduwwun mubin very lead for you he is a open or accursed enemy ah. so there is a connection between uh, shaitan or jinn and, and and mankind as well there is an impact which we will see inshallah so we need to understand this how it happens what happens uh, and so on and so forth right <clears throat> and also like the brother said um, okay we 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 will come to that type so uh, in terms of expectations this is a matter from al ghaib when i say al ghaib it means the unseen the unseen world the unseen matters yeah things which people cannot see the human beings cannot see so when we say jinn we're talking about something from al ghaib and we believe in this uh, surah baqara ayat uh, the, the initial part أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون أنقصون الذين يؤمنون بالغيب الله says after ألف لام ميم that there is no doubt in this book that those who believe in الغيب and spent spent from what he has given them these are the ones who are successful so being a aspect of of the al ghaib and what allah mentioned in the quran surah baqarah and, and various other ayat it becomes all the more important and necessary for us to understand this uh, the other expectation for this uh, workshop we will talk about what was informed to us about the jinn from the quran and the sunna qala allah wa qala rasulullah you will have uh, aspects and you will see on the internet or other lectures or whatever various other matters as well about the jinn some of this is right some of this is wrong 
Okay, so we need to always go back to the sources, the primary sources, which are the Quran and the Sunnah, to understand something about the jinn. Because the Quran says they didn't exist. The Hadith says they didn't exist. So it makes sense to go back to these sources, right? And uh, this topic, like we said, there are many points, even apart from the Quran and the Sunnah, and like from best practices, experience of ulama, and so on and so forth. Some of these are right. Some of these may not be right. We'll also talk about them a bit, inshallah, later on, once we get down into the workshop. We'll also look at some case studies, because we said the jinn have an impact on mankind. So we'll look at some real life cases and also inshallah, maybe some videos about uh, Rukhya and, 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 and uh, the Rakis and so on. We'll talk about who these people are and what this means a bit later. Uh, also, one other expectation I want to set right here is that this is not going to be a comprehensive Rukhya workshop. Rukhya is basically uh, the science of the fact or the art or the action, what you want to call it, of using the Quran and the Sunnah to cure and to heal people by the will of Allah. Using the Quran and the Sunnah to heal a person by the will of Allah. That's Rukya. This is not going to be a comprehensive Rukya workshop, though towards the end, I have a couple of agenda points discussing Rukya and the Raqi. But inshallah, it's not a full-blown, detailed and granular Rukya workshop. Inshallah, maybe after we finish this, in life Allah wills and gives us all tawfiq and hayat, we will do a workshop on Rukya as well. But this is, you know, the, the, the predecessor to that, inshallah. The primary reference I've used for this uh, workshop is uh, a book one of the, by one of the great shiyuk, uh, Dr. Umar al -Ashkar. Uh, he's a great sheikh. He passed away recently. May Allah have mercy on him and grant him Jannah. Ameen. And Dr. Omar, he wrote a series of books on uh, the pillars of Iman, starting from uh, belief in Allah, the messengers, uh, the world of the jinn and devils, which is this one, uh, the books, yeah, uh, Qadr and so on, and, and the last day and so on. Yeah. So he wrote uh, each one, each uh, pillar has a specific uh, volume dedicated to it. So that's the primary reference. I've also taken references from other sources, all Sahih, inshallah. But this book is also available. You can you can um, uh, you can uh, buy it in bookshops or download uh, an online version if you wish. Uh, it's available. Uh, it's a very good book, inshallah. Barakallahu. Time. So the agenda for this uh, workshop and the series of lectures. We're going to start with Tawheed which is uh, yani, the most important thing for a Muslim. No matter how much we uh, try to uh, speak about it, it's not sufficient, right? Because this is the differentiator between us and them. And Tawheed is what will help you with the bad jinn. So Tawheed is very important to understand. So uh, this again, the agenda will not include a full um, yeah, any detailed discussion on Tawheed, but uh, in context, putting various things from Tawheed in context of the workshop, that's what it's going to be. And then we'll move on and talk about the jinn, their definition, uh, where this word came from, its roots, uh, what are the different words uh, which describe this, this, cre this creation of Allah, and some of their sifat, attributes. And then we'll look at the life of the jinn, because they have a life parallel to our life. Like how we have a life on earth, we have, uh, we go about our work and we pray and we uh, enjoy and we eat and drink and we have families and children and grandparents and so on and so forth. Likewise, the jinn have an exactly similar parallel life on earth, on earth. So we look at that and we look at various aspects of their life. Um, we look at the enmity because we said the jinn have an impact on man. We look at the enmity between man and shaitan and we'll also see how shaitan relates to the jinn. We we'll look at the effects of jinn on human beings. Uh, then we we'll look at um, points about rukya. Uh, what is rukya at, at a very high level? Uh, uh, you know, like a forty thousand feet overview of rukya. And finally, how can one protect oneself against the impact and 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 influences of the shayateen? Barakallahu So this is an overall the agenda. Uh, we'll, like we said, I do not know how long it will take. It will probably take around eight to ten sessions, maybe. Inshallah. Uh, but please try to attend every class because this will be interesting. And if you miss anything, uh, try to look up the recording, inshallah, before the next class so you are uh, in sync and you don't go, uh, you don't fall out of line. Barakla Fikum, time. 
<clears throat> so we're going to start with Tawheed. Tawheed, before Tawheed itself, you need to understand another word in the Arabic language, which means Aqidah. Aqidah. Uh, because you, you must have heard this word as well. Aqidah is from Akada. Aqidah is from Akada. Aqidah means belief. Akada, the root is, means something tied firmly to one's heart. You know, like like the, the Boy Scouts uh, knot, which when they teach, if anybody was in Scouts and the Scouts movement, they teach you how to tie various knots when you go camping and stuff like that. So it's like a knot which you tie firmly onto your heart. This is Akida. This is sorry, Akada. And Akida is derived from Akada. So something of a belief which is tied firmly to one's heart. Everybody has this. Everybody has this. There's not a single place who, single person, man or woman who walks this earth who can claim I don't have an Akidah. Everybody has it. It may be right, it may be wrong. It may be right, it may be wrong. There are people who, who have their firm belief in Akidah that Isa alayhi salam, billah, one of the greatest messengers of Allah, is God or son of God. There are people who have an Akidah firmly tied to their heart and believe that you know the, the, the statues which they carve out, the idols, yeah, these are God, or the sun is a God, the stars are gods, uh, elephants are gods, trees are gods, um, what have you. There are people who believe science is God, Scientologists. This is what they believe. There's also a section of people who, who claim to be atheists. They say we're atheists, we don't believe in anything. But in fact, they do believe. They also have an aqidah. They also have an aqidah. And their aqidah is that Nothing is there as, as God per se, but what they believe firmly in their heart, and they still worship various other things like science, like the dollar, like money, like desires. Everybody has an aqidah. But there is only one true aqidah, brothers and sisters. Make no mistake. Make no mistake. There is only one true aqidah. And that is the aqidah of Tawheed. Nothing else matters. Nothing else will help you to enter Jannah except Tawheed. So we need to understand what is Tawheed. Again, most of you know this, but just bear with me. These are just putting this in context because this has a great bearing on the world of the jinn and to understand about the jinn. <clears throat> so we said Akhida is from Akhida. And Tawheed is your only solution, only solution, because if you look at the agenda, which we talked about uh, earlier, and if you look at this aspect of uh, uh, Rukia here and the effects of jinn on human beings and how they can affect us, uh, including position, jinn position is, is a fact. And this has happened. So these things are very serious matters. Uh, very serious matters. A person can get killed by the will of, by the will of Allah through a jinn or through a jinni. So when we realize this and when we realize that this, this matter is serious and the issue is serious, the only thing which is going to help you against them is Tawheed. The only thing which will help you against them is Tawheed. So it's more, though, more important to understand what is this Tawheed we're talking about. Barakallahu See, the heart, a person's heart, is like a box. And we choose what we put in there as, in terms of our belief and aqidah. And everybody has something in it, like we said. Right? And there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa where he says, and this hadith is also in um, uh, Arabai Nabawi, uh, Imam al Nabawi's uh, 40 hadith, yeah, the famous compilation, and various books of hadith. Uh, and this is from uh, Noman ibn Bashir, radiallahu an. Rasulullah says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the heart, sorry, he says in the hadith, meaning of which is that in the body there is a piece of flesh. In the body there is a piece of flesh. If it is sound, the entire body is sound, salim. And if it is not, then the entire body is bad and nakis and weak. And he said, Iman has to be manifested. But first, let's talk about this. The, the piece of flesh Rasulullah is referring to is what? The heart. Everybody has a heart, obviously. There is no walking human being on the earth who says, I don't, I don't have a heart. Yeah. And we're not talking about hearts being given to wives and girlfriends. No, we're just talking about the normal heart. Yeah. Everybody has one. And this is the body of the piece of flesh, sorry, which Rasulullah is referring to. Rasulullah says, if this is sound, the whole body is sound. 
So there is a direct interaction. There is a direct dependency of your body, of what you do, how you act, what you say, how you behave, how you feel to the heart. Direct relation. And this hadith is sahih. So if the heart is sound, the body is sound. If the heart is not sound, if there is shirk in it, if there are bidat in it, the body is weak. And our aqidah, what we understand in terms of tawheed, is obtained from two primary sources. The Quran and the authentic sunnah. The Quran as understood by the salaf, very important. Who are the salaf? The salaf are the earliest uh, generations of the pious predecessors, if you want to call them that. The first three generations, the generation of the Sahaba, the generation of the Tabain, who came after the Sahaba, anhum, and then the generation of the Atba Tabain, who came after the Tabain. So these are the three generations. Rasulullah says in the Hadith, meaning of which is, the best of generations is my generation, the generation of the Sahaba. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then the next, and then the next. So he stopped with this. The best of generations across time, across right from Adam al Islam till the end of time. The best of generations is the generation of Sahaba. Then the next Tabain, and then the next Atma Tabain. So we need to understand the Quran as they understood it, because the Quran was revealed to the Sahaba. Of course, to Rasulullah, but when the Sahaba were with him, they witnessed the revelation happening to Rasulullah. They witnessed the context of the revelation. They knew why a particular ayat was revealed, why a particular hadith was revealed. So we need to understand the Quran based on the understanding of the Sahaba. I'll give you an example. In, in Surah Rahman, Ar Rahman, yeah, Surah Rahman, Allah says, meaning of which is that um, there, is, there, is, uh, there are two uh, water bodies. Yeah, the salt and the, and the fresh water bodies. And there is a barzakh between them. There is a barrier between them. And from these two bodies, you take your pearls and the corals. Right? So the, the danger, brothers, we have is anybody who understands Arabic language can interpret this ayat any which way he wishes. He, he wishes. The Rafida, the Shia, the Rafida, they claim that these two, salt, these, these two water bodies, the salt and the uh, fresh water body, whatever, these two water bodies are Ali an, and Fatima, his wife. Anha. And the pearls and corals which, which Ajala is talking about taking from these bodies, they claim are Hassan and Hussein. Subhanallah. Where did you get this from? So the point is, somebody else who knows Arabic will come and say, oh, no, no, no. The, the two water bodies Allah is referring to in Surah Rahman are Adam and Eve. Adam and Hawa, our parents. And the two, uh, and the pearls and corals, which, which are obtained from these bodies, they will say, are uh, Habil and Kabil, Cain and Abel. So we need to, this is a very dangerous issue. And we have this issue today. People trying to interpret the Quran any which way they like to deviate the Ummah. So as, as, as students, as students of knowledge, you need to go back to the classical sources. You need to go back to understand how Rasulullah understood this verse, how the Sahaba understood this verse. They understood it literally, literally. And today, science proves that there is a barrier between these two water bodies. They do not mix. Khalas, simple and easy. So understanding of the Aqidah has to be taken from the Quran as understood by the Salaf. And the authentic Sunnah. Because the Sunnah, the body of Sunnah, the, the hadith, hadith which we have is huge. Huge. But there is a science of Hadith, as we all know, where scholars have diligently and put in great efforts to filter out the sahih and the authentic hadith from the weak, the, the fabricated, and, and so on and so forth hadith. Even today, people fabricate hadith, referring to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah Sallallahu said in a hadith, which is a very dangerous hadith for such people. He said, the one who lies upon me, let him take his place in hellfire. Rasulullah says in this hadith sahih, the one who lies upon me, let him take his place in hellfire. So it's very dangerous to pass on a hadith, especially in this day and age of social media. Please check the hadith. Check if it is authentic. Ask the person who sent it to you, where did you get it from? Where is the reference? It doesn't show any reference. Even if the reference is given, check the book of hadith if the reference is correct. It may be wrong. Somebody may just put Bukhari, just to say, okay, it's Bukhari, khalas, it's okay, and take it forward. No, check the, check the reference. Maybe it's wrong. Because when you forward it, you're accountable. You're responsible for this. 
And we as Muslims, we follow the authentic sunnah. We do not follow uh, uh, fabricated hadith. Even the weak hadith, especially in matters of uh, aqidah. We do not follow weak hadith. In matters of fiqh, it's allowable if there is no strong hadith available. But if there is a strong hadith available, we do not follow the weak hadith, obviously. It doesn't make sense. So our aqidah as Muslims, and even this topic, the understanding of the jinn, we are taking it from the Quran as understood by the Salaf and the authentic Sunnah. Nothing else, inshallah. And the two best books on, 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 on the Sunnah with authentic, completely authentic, are Bukhari and Muslim. But apart from that, you have the other books like uh, Abu Dawood, uh, Nasai, Ibn Majah. Yeah? Uh, all these books also have hadith which are sahih, but they also have weak hadith. So, but these are the first two, the Bukhari and Muslim, they have all Sahih Hadith. But there could be a Hadith, which is, for example, in Abu Dawood, which is Sahih, which is not in Bukhari. This is possible. It's possible. Barakla Fikum. So don't think that whatever a Hadith you have in Bukhari and Muslim is only the Deen. No, not necessarily. The point we're making here is about authentic Hadith, the authentic Sunnah. Taib, inshallah. So our Tawheed is what? Two parts actually, the shahadatain. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. So when you say la ilaha illallah, the first part, la in Arabic language is to negate something, to say, uh, to, to, to negate or to say no to something. There are different uh, meanings of la, of course, but in this context, it's to negate something. So we are first negating something and then we are affirming something in this statement, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha. We are saying there is no ilah. Subhanallah, no ilah? No ilah, yes, no ilah. But we have to complete, of course, yeah. What is ilah? Ilah is anything which is worshipped. Ilah in the Arabic language means anything which is worshipped. So like we said in the earlier example, Isa al is worshipped by these people. So he's an ilah for them. Uh, the elephant and the trees are worshipped by some people. They are ilah for them. What we as Muslims are saying and claiming and affirming and acknowledging is the fact that la ilah illallah. Ah. There is nothing worthy of worship. Illa, illa means accept. It is an exception word. Illallah, accept Allah. Yeah, now we are making sense. There is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. It's very important when we talk about the jinn as we will see inshallah later. Please keep this in mind. See, this introduction is not something uh, just for the heck of it or, uh, you know, I, I just put it there for uh, giving you a, a, a course on Tawheed. No, it's very, very important when you talk about this. Very important, as you will appreciate once we get, uh, once we deep dive into the workshop. So, Tawheed is of different types. The scholars have categorized it into three. Rububiyya, Uluhiyya, Asma wa Sifat. What do I mean by this? So, so Tawheed, like we said, okay, I, I didn't mention, sorry, I, I apologize. I didn't give you the meaning of Tawheed itself. Subhanallah. Type. Alhamdulillah. So uh, we, we defined Aqidah, of course, from Aqidah. And we said Tawheed is only, what is Tawheed? Tawheed is from, is from the word Wahada. Tawheed is from the word Wahada. And it means, Wahada is something unique or one, yeah? Wahid. Uh, uh, you say, Wahid Shawarma or you know whatever yeah one you know you all know this word right one Wahada uh, so Tawheed means to single out Allah to make him unique again I repeat very important to single out Allah and to make him unique in his lordship in his worship and his name and names and attributes Rububiya Uluhiya Asma wa Safat so Tawheed is to single out Allah, to make him unique in his lordship, Rububiyya. What is this? It means, and it, it means, it implies that you accept and acknowledge and believe that Allah is the only creator. He is the only sustainer. He is the only destroyer. He is the only one who preserves, cherishes, nourishes. Huh? He's the one who gives children. He's the one who provides rain. He's the one who provides food and risk. Families, uh, spouses, children. This is Rububiyya. He's the one who cures. He's the only one who heals. This is Rububiyya. The dominion is his. Al-Mulk is his. 
بيصير رب العالمين يا سوره فاتحه الحمد لله رب العالمين رب العالمين رب اجين okay, ربوبيه from the word رب and all of you know this you use this dua as well ربي زدني علما ربنا اعطينا في الدنيا يا رب is a common word you know this but we need to understand what it means رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين so what is رب العالمين رب of عالمين العالمين what is العالمين العالمين is everything which exists except Allah taking Allah out of this whole thing this is alamin so your earth your heavens your your uh, galaxies solar systems what have what have you human beings jinn angels insects fish animals uh, mountains trees everything everything which exists except Allah this is alamin so Allah is the rub of this alamin khalas this is rububiyah in a nutshell Of course, there are many more points to it, but just for the scope of this uh, workshop, we're keeping it simple and easy, inshallah. This is rububiyah. Uluhiya is what it makes sense, ya khi. So if 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 Allah is is the only one, He is the Creator, He is the Provider, He is the one who who manages matters and affairs. La hawla wa la quwwat illa billah. Nothing happens except with His will. So it makes sense to worship only Him. Why would you want to go and worship somebody else? This is also important in the matters of jinn because when people want to treat issues with the jinn, they go to all kinds of people. That's why tawhid is important. When we talk about the world of the jinn, they go to the quacks and the charlatans and the, I, I, Subhanallah, Wallahi, I'm not joking. I know of a case, and we'll talk about this a bit later, Inshallah, where the people, the family, they went to a pundit. You know, the pundit, the Hindu priest, to come and treat a Muslimah. With, from jinn position can you believe that but this is the issue with tawhid right they have an issue with tawhid but we'll come to that inshallah uh, and it's a very interesting case in there but anyway so um uluhiyah tawhid uluhiyah means singling out allah making him unique in all aspects of your worship all all not only in salah not only inside the masjid all aspects of your worship so you love only allah you fear only allah huh okay love and fear can also be like this natural like you like you love your wife you love your husband you love your children this is okay but the love you're talking about allah is something different you do not put your love for your wife or your husband over your love for allah fearing if you uh, of course again this natural fear as you call it like uh, for example i uh, snakes i i i'm scared of snakes for example personally maybe you're not but you know but if a snake comes into the room i'll be scared this is a natural fear which is in the heart no problem inshallah this is not nothing to do with shirk this is okay but to fear allah is something different you fear allah more than anything else all these are aspects of worship there is worship of the body the body parts like salah huh? Uh, sadaqah which you give with your hand hajj and so on you do actions with your body there is also the worship of the heart matters of the heart like fear and love and so on and so forth so for all aspects of this you should single out and make allah unique only and worship him alone this is the problem we have with the people who who go to the graves for example right so this brother he comes to the masjid he prays and then he goes to the grave also and prays to the grave so he is not singling out allah alone in his worship he is he is distributing his worship to allah and gairullah he is making gairullah along uh, in, in parallel with allah a'udhu billah see the problem with us muslims brothers and brothers and sisters is that we have not comprehended allah enough we do not understand allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So again, please go back, and when you have the time, study Tawheed, understand Tawheed more in detail. It's very, very, very important. And finally, we have Tawheed Asma wa Sifat, which is singling out and making Allah unique in His names and attributes. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Allah itself is the greatest name of Allah. Yeah, Ar Razzaq, Al Ghafur, Al Ghafir. Yeah, all these are names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and each name has an attribute. Each name has an attribute. But not vice versa. Each at each attribute uh, need not necessarily have a name. So when we say uh, Gaffar and Gaffur, uh, he's the one who forgives. So forgiving is an attribute. 
you can so you can say and it's highly recommended to use Allah's names when you make dua. So you can say Ya Ghafar, Fakfirli. Or, or, or the one who, who, who forgives, forgive me. Highly recommended. This is one of the tawassul methods, the wajib and, and halal, sorry, halal uh, tawassul methods. So these are the types of tawheed. The scholars have categorized it into three. Rububiyya, luhiyya, asma sifat. Everything means singling out, making Allah unique in his, in his lordship, uh, in his worship, and names and attributes. And the opposite of this, and what destroys this is shirk. Shirk is taking partners with Allah in his rububiyya, or taking partners in Allah with his uluhiyya, or taking partners in Allah with his asma wa sifat. All the three categories. So if you believe the stars will give you rain, this shirk in rububiyya. Okay, say, Jazakallah khair. When I say, if you believe, I don't necessarily mean you, I apologize. It's just a matter of my speaking. Uh, so it's nothing personal. Don't uh, take it to heart and not come tomorrow. So inshallah, this is something, yani, uh, this is my way of speaking. I'm trying to avoid it, but sometimes it, it slips. Type. So uh, if one were, thinks that the stars give the rain or uh, some solar eclipse will cause somebody to die or somebody to be born, this shirk and rububiya. If one believes that uh, Fala Baba, Fala Peer, Fala Khalandar Baba buried it here and there and there, there, he has the ability, the capability to give uh, this person a child or to get him married or to get him a job. This is shirk in Uluhiya. He's worshipping him, right? He's worshipping him. It, it is shirk in both, but he's worshipping this person. He bows down to him. He goes around his, his uh, grave and all kinds of nonsense. And finally, shirk in Asma Sifat. So to believe that anybody else can forgive as Allah forgives, the shirk in Asma wa Sifat. And shirk destroys Tawheed completely. And it is the only unforgivable sin, Allah, sin sorry, Allah says in the Quran, meaning of which is that uh, he will forgive any sin which he wishes. If he wishes, like zina, uh, drinking khamar, uh, uh, gambling, backbiting, uh, slandering, uh, what have you, uh, any sin under the sun, yani, if a Muslim commits it, if Allah, if Allah wishes, it's up to him. Maliki uh, Yomid Deen, he is the master of the day of judgment. If he wishes, he can forgive, Allah says. Except, Allah says, except shirk. Ah. So shirk is something which Allah will never forgive if the person dies upon it. As long as he's living, there is hope. If he makes dua, inshallah Allah will accept and he should reform. But if he dies on shirk, even if his name is Abdullah, even if his name is Abdul Rahman, he will end up in hellfire for eternity, forever. Forever. So this is Tawheed La ilaha illallah. Again, this is a very high level summary. Uh, I highly encourage all of you to when you find the time to study Tawheed. The second part of it is Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Rasulullah. Ah. He is the messenger of Allah. Rasul approximately translates to messenger and Nabi uh, approximately translates to prophet. And Rasulullah was both, Muhammad Sallallahu was both a messenger and a prophet of Allah. Excuse me. So, when we say Ashhadu Allah la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. So when a Hindu Krishna Murti becomes a Muslim, what does he say? He says these exact words. When John Doe becomes a Muslim, he says these exact words. When some Buddhist becomes a Muslim, he says these exact words. So now he's and we all say these exact words any day in and day out. But do we know do we know what it mean means? That's the point, brothers and sisters. That's the point we want to focus upon. That's the point we want to learn from the meanings of these words. I'll give you an example. Uh, in the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, um, the kuffar of Quraysh, Abu Jahal and, and his companions, they went to Abu Talib, the uncle of Rasulullah, and they told him, your, you know, your nephew is causing a big problem. This happened in the Makkan period. They said, call him and speak to him and ask him to stop uh, this thing. And they kept on complaining. So Abu Talib sent for his nephew. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam comes in. And uh, there was a place between Abu Talib and Abu Jahl. There was a gap. So Abu Jahl feared that if Rasulullah sits there, you know, he'll, uh, Abu Talib would be, he's close to his uncle and Abu Talib would be favorable to him and he may not say anything. So Abu Jahl jumped and sat in that gap. So he didn't want Rasulullah to sit close to uh, uh, his uncle Abu Talib. 
So Rasulullah sat by the door. So Abu Talib told Rasulullah, Ya Muhammad, what are these people telling about you? They are complaining about you. So Rasulullah told them, and Abu Jahl was there, uh, Abu Sufyan, uh, Uqba bin Mu'id, and all these kuffar from the Quraysh were there. So Rasulullah told them, told them, I'm just asking one word from them, one kalima. That's all. Abu Jahl, you know what he said? He said, Ya Muhammad, one kalima? If this, if this whole mess will stop with one kalima, I'll give you ten. I'll give you ten. What one kalima? I'll give you ten kalimas. Tell me what do you want? I'll give you ten. One, I'll give you ten. If this is going to stop all this, khalas, alhamdulillah, no problem, inshallah. Ten, yalla. What did Rasulullah say, sallallahu alayhi wa He said, all I want you to say is, la ilaha illallah. What did, what did Abu Jahl say, reply and say? Abu Jahl was a person who knew Arabic language. He was an Arab. And he knew what la ilaha illallah meant better than you and me. What did he say? He said, anything but this word. Anything but this word. Because Abu Jahl knew, if I say la ilaha, la ilaha illallah, I have to follow it. I have to implement it in my life. And then they said, this is ajib. He's, you, you, he's making all the gods into one. Ajib, they said. Because they had like 360 idols around, in and around the Kaaba. So this is the importance of la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So we all say this every day. But do we mean, do we know what it means? Abu Jahl knew it better than you and me. We say it and we still go and do the contradictory actions to it. Like Muhammad Rasulullah. How many of us, all of us say Muhammad Rasulullah, Ya Muhammad and, and this and that. And uh, we put bumper stickers on the cars. We sing nasheeds. We celebrate maulid. We all love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and when the recent events happened, what which happened in this country, and we all were angry about it. Taib, good, alhamdulillah, fantastic. But do we know what Rasulullah means? That's the point, brothers. What does it mean when we, when we say and we accept that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was sent as a messenger of Allah, messenger of Allah, messenger of Allah, that he is the only one to be followed in every aspect. Not only in Salah, even in Salah we don't follow him, subhanAllah. Or I'll pray like a Hanafi, I'll pray like a Shafi, I'll pray, pray like a Maliki. Then what about praying like Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So when we say Rasulullah and we say Nabiullah, we don't mean only in the Masjid. Every aspect of our life, including how Rasulullah uh, dealt with the jinn, including how Rasulullah treated himself with the jinn, with the impacts and effects of the jinn, as we will see inshallah. So this is the sunnah. When we say sunnah, this is what it means. The hadith, this is what it means. His life. And if you open a book of hadith, and I'm sure you have books of hadith at home, Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawud, whatever, you will find that in the table of contents, there is a categorization of different abwab, bab, bab al uh, salah, bab al zakah, uh, the chapter of salah, chapter of zakah, chapter of hajj, chapter of uh, Sadaqah, chapter of marriage, chapter of divorce, chapter of jihad, chapter of uh, buying and selling, chapter of uh, inheritance. All this is the sunnah, all this is Rasulullah. So we marry as per Rasulullah. We divorce as per his way. We, 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 we fight as per his way. We deal and buy and sell as per his way. We uh, inherit as per his way. Everything. This is sunnah. And the opposite of that is what? And what destroys sunnah is what? Bidah. If you, if, you, if you recall in the beginning, if the brothers who joined initially in the start of the lecture, I recited the, what, is we call, what is called Khutbat al-Hujjah. Khutbat al-Hujjah. Uh, in alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu ya, and so on. The second part of that is what? Fa'inna khaira hadithi kitabullah wa khaira hadiyah hadiyah Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa shari al-umri muhtatatuha wa kulla muhtatatin bid'a wa kullum bid'a'atin dalala wa kullum dalalatin fin nara. Ah. And this was recited by Rasulullah on Yom al Jummah, on, on, on marriage occasions, uh, important uh, durus, and so on and so forth. He would recite Khutbat al Hujjah. It is Sunnah. But what are we talking about? The second part, we, we, it means it translates the, the meaning is, the, is what? That the best of speech is, is the speech of Allah, Quran. And the best of guidance is the guidance of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best of guidance is the guidance of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then it continues every, every newly invented matter is a bidah. Every newly invented matter is a bidah. And every bidah is a dalala, is going astray. And every dalala will take you to hellfire. 
So Bida will take you eventually into hellfire. And it amazes me sometimes. Wallah, it amazes me. When we say Ashadun Muhammadun uh, Rasulullah, we are witnessing. Ashadu means what I witness. I bear witness. And Allah says in the Quran, in the Lakum uh, Rasulillahi Uswatun Hasana. In the Messenger of Allah, you have the best example. So why are we introducing matters into the into the Deen? That's the point. So. Uh, again, you will find in, in, in matters of uh, in the area of jinn and especially in the treatment for issues from the jinn, a lot of bidat, a lot of innovations which we should avoid. Because we have sunnah, we have the way Rasulullah did it. So we follow this inshallah, alhamdulillah. And uh, finally a saying by Imam Sufyan at uh, he was one of the tabayin, and he said that shaitan loves bidah more than he loves disobedience. Shaitan loves bid'a more than he loves disobedience. Disobedience in terms of like what I mean is committing sins, yeah? Somebody committing sins. So Shaitan is pleased with the person, a Muslim, who is doing bid'a in innovation in the deen, than he is uh, with somebody committing a sin like drinking alcohol or uh, dealing with riba or whatever. Why? Why do you think this is the case? Because the person who commits a sin, the Muslim, he knows this is wrong. Wallahi, find me a Muslim today who will tell you uh, eating pork is okay or committing zina is okay or drinking alcohol is okay. Yeah, he may be doing it. A, he may be fighting it, fighting the desires. Or B, he knows it is wrong, but he's still, you know, kind of fallen into it and he's trying to get out of it. Yeah, knowing that it is wrong. He knows it is wrong. Even Riba, for example, the person who works in the bank, uh, if you tell him, yeah, this is wrong, he knows, yes, I, he will tell you, yes, I know riba is wrong, but what to do, this is the only job I have. Or what to do, this is, I'm not in the direct riba section, I'm in the IT or whatever. So he knows in his heart of hearts that this is a sin. Maybe he doesn't know that, that he is doing a sin, but he knows riba is a sin. But the people doing bidat, they think what they're doing is, is the deen. They think what they're doing is the deen. So the chances for them to, to repent and, 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 and seek forgiveness from Allah is very slim, very minimal. But the people who are committing sins, inshallah, inshallah, someday, inshallah, they will seek forgiveness, inshallah. There is hope always for that. So shaitan loves the person who makes bidah because this, this person, this person doing bidah, he thinks it is the deen of Islam. He thinks this is right. He thinks I am on the right path. And there are so many innovations. This is not the scope to go into it in detail, but I'm sure you're aware of this. If you have any doubts, you can ask me later or offline as well on the Telegram Q&A group. The second aspect of, of uh, Tawheed for us uh, as an introduction to the uh, topic of the world of the jinn is that to understand and, and, and recognize and implement the pillars of Iman, what is Iman? Iman is again, roughly translates, uh, translates into belief, right? And the pillars are simple and easy. Everybody knows this, even small children, Muslim children, Alhamdulillah, they know this. Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wal yawmil akhir wa qadar wa sharri wa khairihi. That a Muslim believes in Allah, he believes in the angels, in the books which Allah sent, in the messengers which he sent, from mankind in the last day, the day of judgment and everything associated with it. And finally in the Qadr, the good and the bad of it. Uh, d destiny or divine uh, preordainment, whatever you want to call it. And all of this, as you see, focus largely on Al-Ghaib. Ah, Al-Ghaib. But yet we believe in this, we believe in this firmly. Right from the first one, belief in Allah. Who, who of us has seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Nobody. But don't we believe in him? Of course we do. Of course. Who of us has seen the angels? No, no, nobody. We, we believe in them? Of course. Who of us has seen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa from, from this generation? Of course I'm talking about. Nobody. But do we believe? Of course. Who of us has seen the last day? Has anybody gone and come back from the day of judgment? No. It has not even commenced. It has not even started. But we believe firmly in this. 
this this belief in our last the last day drives us drives our drives our iman it is what makes us better muslims the belief in the last day and finally qadr this i, I will talk about more about because many people have an issue here but the point is how can we believe in all of this when we have not seen it simply because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said so khalas for us this is sufficient as a muslim this is sufficient for us this is the greatness when we when talked about the surah baqara the initial ayat of al ghaib this is the greatness of a moment that he believes in all of this without even feeling it or touching it and seeing it allahu akbar simply because his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed them about it that is sufficient for us everything else is secondary type where is jin here now we said belief in jin one of the brothers earlier when we when we had a poll he said uh, we need to learn about jin because it is a pillar of iman but where is jin here i don't see jin anywhere type the scholars have put this together with belief in the angels the second pillar of iman so belief in the angels includes the belief in the jin also we have the hadith of uh, the famous hadith of jibril alayhi salam most of you know this but jibril alayhi salam came as a man uh, into madina and he asked rasulullah various questions he asked him what is islam what is iman and rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam rasulullah sallallahu mentioned these pillars when he, when he was asked about iman so we have various evidences about the pillars of iman being these and the scholars based on these evidences have included the jinn in the second pillar which is the belief in the angels so the belief in the angels and also including the belief in the jinn and this is something we believe in because many people uh, you know okay people who have issues health wise yeah yes this could be a medical problem but this could also be an issue with the jinn so we need to understand that as we will see towards the later part of this uh, workshop uh, so for that we need to understand jinn itself and what they can and what they cannot do and what are the symptoms and so on and so forth there are also muslims muslims who do not believe in the jinn itself the final point of belief in the qadr is important because what is qadr qadr is something which allah has decreed for us 50000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth not before you and i were born 50000 years before the creations of the heavens and the earth everything is decreed including where we will end up jannah or nar and we hope it is jannah inshallah this is qadr it also means what happened to you could never have missed you let's say a brother had an accident a car accident or he fell sick or he got the covid or whatever and we ask allah to protect us from all of this if this happened to a brother it was bound to happen it could never have missed him this is qadr if something missed a brother you driving on the road and suddenly there's a near miss you know a car just brushes by you and oh subhanallah akbar allah saved me you brake and you jam your brakes and it goes and stops right near the car alhamdulillah you missed this accident it was never going to happen to you anyway this is the belief in the qadr uh this may lead to some questions but you know uh, this is not the topic of of the, the workshop but if you have any questions further on this let me know inshallah offline on the q and a group and i will try to answer barakallahu feekum but it's important in terms of the relevance of the world of the jinn because uh, when we have the interaction with the jinn and the impact of the jinn on human beings qadr comes into play in a large way as we will see inshallah so belief in 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 the jinn um is is part of the second pillar of uh, the pillars of iman barakallahu feekum taib so that was an introduction kind of on tauhid a very high level again i i highly encourage all of you uh, brothers and sisters please uh, find the time to study tauhid because a half an hour discussion on tauhid is never enough it's never enough but i just wanted to mention that because it has a bearing on iman bearing on the jinn and and understanding them it's very important so i highly encourage you to do a more detailed study on tauhid itself uh, because this is very beneficial for a muslim the second part of the agenda inshallah and we'll try to start this we still have uh, i think some time inshallah maybe 10 minutes or so is uh, the definition and some attributes of the jinn where did this name come from 
the origin of the name yeah where, where, where did it come from it's from the word jannah not jannah like paradise it's jannah there's a difference type right? jannah this is the root word from in, from which jinn is is uh, derived <clears throat> it means the root word as well, root word actually means to hide or to conceal or to keep something away from view to hide or to conceal yeah uh, and it 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 this is how the word jinni or jinn came in because the jinn are hidden from us we cannot see them and that's why even the human fetus the 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 baby or the unborn baby or the human fetus is called janin because it is hidden in the womb it is concealed in the mother's womb similarly you have uh, uh, yeah janin janin this is the human fetus you have mujanna as well mujanna is is a shield it's what we use in fighting right you protect your body you hide you conceal your body from the arrows or from the attack of the enemy using a shield mujanna fasting is a shield rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fasting is a shield asumu jannah is fasting is a shield so this protects you from 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 sins and and misbehavior and so on and so forth the plural is janna for janna the root word the plural is janna type so uh, it's it's given this word this body of this creation is given this word from uh, the root hiding or concealing because they are concealed from us allah has concealed them from us or hidden them from us we cannot see them but they can see us we cannot see them but they can see us in fact this english word you have jini uh, jini ya jini g g e n i e yeah it's from this it's from jinni it's from the arabic word jinni see the singular is jinni j i n n i singular jinni the plural is jin so when we say the world of the jin we are talking about a plural uh, word here jin jama it's plural the singular is jinni j i n n i that's from where that's from where they took this uh, corrupted english word called jini yeah type there are other words for jin in the arabic language and we want to kind of run through them as well inshallah uh jinni we mentioned uh, the jin by themselves there's also this word amir umar is umar is plural uh, it's a jin which lives among mankind jin uh, or jinni rather or jin which live amongst mankind then you have arwah which is a jinn which antagonizes the young or the youth specifically and then you have uh, shaitan or shayateen which mean the evil jinns or the evil ones which antagonize human beings generally right and you also have uh, afrit or ifrit or afarit which is plural these are the jinni or the jinn which are Uh, very strong they're very strong and they can cause a lot of harm and they're very strong we'll talk more about them as well a bit later inshallah but these are some terms i wanted to highlight to you up front so you are aware of these words um and the arabic language uses different words for different things uh, the quran for example talks about ifrit min al jin so you know we're talking about the last one there you have, you know of course shaitan this is a common word everybody knows this yeah you may not know arwa or ammar uh this is something which is new for you probably probably but inshallah this is good to to know and have this knowledge so when you come across texts which have these words you will know what it means barakallahu feekum taib uh some other definitions i just wanted to also mention uh because uh, jinn we talked about already jinni and jinn jinni is the singular uh jinn is uh, plural ain is the basically refers to i but in this context of sharia it refers to the evil eye it refers to the evil eye ain okay um uh, sihr when we say sihr we mean magic magic sorcery yeah all these terms really uh, are similar terms and this is what it means sahir is a magician a sorcerer sometimes these words uh, sihr and sahir are also used for uh, fortune telling uh, brothers please switch off your cameras and microphones does anybody have it on the barakallahu feekum so 
sihir uh, is is the act of magic fortune telling sometimes used for that as well sorcery and sahir is the one who does it the file the one who does it is a sahir ruqya is using the quran and the sunnah to heal a person by the will of allah the last part is very important very important by the will of allah ruqya is the use of the quran and the sunnah as uh, described in, in, in the uh, hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the sahih hadith, to cure or heal a person by the will of Allah. Everything happens with the will of Allah, and this is Qadr as well. And the Raqi is the file, is the one who does Ruqya. So if you use uh, Surah Fatiha, for example, to heal somebody, or you use uh, the Muadzatain, uh, Surah uh, Nas, Surah Falak, yeah, to, to cure somebody, you are called a Raqi. You are called a Raqi. So I hope these terms are clear, inshallah. Taib. Um, okay, I'll just pause for a while here and see if you have any questions on what we covered so far. Please raise your hands if you do. Uh, if not, I can continue for a few minutes. I don't have anything on the chat box. But if you have any questions, brothers, please raise your hands if you do. Or if you have anything, you can post it on the chat box as well. I don't think there's anything. Because we, we kind of did an introduction today. We didn't really. OK, we have a question from Brother Sajid. Uh, go ahead, please. Brother Sajid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This jinn word is derived from, uh, which you talk about, about jinn. It's derived from the prophetic ahadis, or uh, it's derived from the Quran itself? We are coming to this next session. but. Um, just to answer your 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 uh, question, uh, jinn is the, the word jinn itself, yeah, is a derivation. It's what mentioned in the Quran and the Hadith. Type. Now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala chose this from the root word jannah, which means to hide or to conceal. So it is Allah who used this word jinn for us in the Quran, in the Arabic, uh, in, the, in the Quran or in the Hadith. But the root of this word is already present in the Arabic language. It's already there in the Arabic language. People know this word already. Clear. Yeah, yeah. Barakallah. Jazakallah khair. Any other questions? Any other brothers? Any hands? No hands raised. Barakallah um, Okay, I think we'll we'll continue tomorrow, inshallah. Uh, let me just, uh, for the brothers and sisters who came in late, uh, this is what we plan to do. So um, tomorrow again, same time, 3.30 p.m., Saudi time or Arabian Standard Time. Uh, inshallah, please calculate how it works for you in your own uh, geographical region. We'll continue talking about uh, the jinn, uh, some attributes, origins, where they were created from, how they were created, uh, the first jinn, and so on and so forth. Yeah, various types of jinn, um, and also finally, shaitan and jinn, and how shaitan relates to the jinn. So we'll look all, at all of this inshallah tomorrow. Um, and again, um, this. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Could you, share, could you please share your uh, pages, sir? Pages? Which pages? Uh, the, this one. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you I'll can take, us, take a screenshot yeah, yeah. of this, if you wish. Uh, I will post this recording on the link on the on the Vimeo link out there, inshallah, and also post it on the lectures group. The other groups, like I said, the Q&A group are for question and answers. If you have any question on Deen, you can contact me there, and I will try to answer it in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah. Uh, and the Telegram channel, uh, is basically a general login like, public channel where I post, inshallah, beneficial information, uh, which will, inshallah, will benefit. Um, so you can you can join any of these. It's up to you. Uh, and the first link, uh, the hyperlink, vimeocom slash channels slash Islam for us is where I post all my video recordings, and even this will be posted there, inshallah. Barakallah fikum. Type. So jazakumullah khairan for joining. We'll stop with this, and we will continue tomorrow, inshallah, same time, three thirty, bismillah. Until then, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, Ashhadu wa la ilaha ant, astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaik. Wa akhir da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.